Hello, my name is Mindy Lindheim I'm with Textron Aviation, and to help celebrate Women's History Month, we are highlighting some different women aircraft owners and aviators. And today I am joined by Stevie. Hello, Stevie, how are you? I'm great, Mindy, how are you? I'm so good, and I have so many things I wanna ask you, but first I wanna know about the airplane that you own and fly, tell me all about it. Absolutely, so my airplane behind me is a 1952 C-35 Beechcraft Bonanza. Um, to me, it's perfect for a short hop to breakfast or a, as many of you might know, a long haul trip across the country. And for me, it's the perfect amount of vintage charm in an airplane. I love it. I, I love your plane too, and I know you love it from following along. So what made you decide to buy a Bonanza in the first place? So when I was looking for an airplane, actually part of the reason I started learning to fly was just because of a love for small airplanes. So owning a plane was always something that I wanted to do. And I did all of my training in Cessna 152s and 172s, which I love, um, definitely would love to buy a 152 someday. Um, but when I was looking for a plane for myself, I wanted something a little bit different, not too different that it was like, you know, too unique that you couldn't find parts or something like that, um, but something a little bit more faster, um, had four seats, a low wing perhaps. And so that left me with a few options, but I really was just drawn to the look of the V-Tail Bonanza and all of the vintage charm that it has. Um, it just really fit my mission perfectly and I have not regretted my decision today, so. <laughs> well, I love seeing all the photos and videos of it. And so now tell me about you, what pilot ratings do you hold? So I hold my commercial and my instrument rating as well as my flight instructor rating. Um, I started flying in June of 2018 after my sophomore year of college, and then I got my CFI in January of 2020. So I know you don't work in aviation, so how did you decide to become a flight instructor and get all these hard ratings? <laughs> so interesting story. Um, when I started learning to fly, as I mentioned, I was just learning to fly for fun. So I started flight training in June of 2018, and after I got my private in December 2018, I'm sure you're well familiar, people start asking you two questions. First one is, when are you gonna get your instrument rating? And the second one is, when are you going to the airlines? And I hadn't really thought about being a pilot as a career before. Um, it was never presented to me as something to do until I started flying. And at the time, I was a junior at the University of Michigan studying computer science and I love my software engineering job now, but at the time I was very burnt out from school. So I started to think, you know, maybe I do want to be an airline pilot. I love flying. I could totally see myself doing this. So that prompted me to continue and go ahead and get all the way through flight instructor rating and then COVID happened. So that kind of forced my hand a little bit, but I'm really glad with how things played out. And I love just general aviation and flying for fun. Yes, I love that you have this balance where you have a job outside of aviation and it appears from the outside looking in that it makes you appreciate general aviation just that much more like, oh, I'm gonna get off work and go fly my airplane. Absolutely. <laughs> so since you've had this airplane, how has that changed your life? It, it has changed my life in so many ways that I don't even think I can list them all to you right now. But I mean, I think first of all, just buying the plane and airplane ownership as a whole has just taught me so much. It's taught me about insurance, escrow, pre-purchase agreements. It's taught me how to do an oil change. I assisted with my annual in 2021. So I've just learned a lot about maintenance and just buying an airplane in general, which is you know something that somebody my age might not know otherwise. Um, it's also changed my life because general aviation as a whole allows you to see the world in such a different way and it connects you with so many different people. Um, and I think Beechcraft and Bonanza owners especially have such a tight-knit community that I've just met so many people that are now some of my best friends. That seems to be a common theme with aircraft <laughs> owners is that the favorite thing is all the people that you connect with. So that's really- Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me, what is your favorite memory in your Bonanza? There are so many to choose from. I think all my favorite memories definitely have to do with flying with my friends or family, but one of my favorite memories is flying my mom to an airport restaurant. Um, she doesn't have any background in aviation and she's only been in the Bonanza a few times, but we just, it's something so unique that you can only experience through general aviation. So I love sharing that with her. Yeah, taking someone who's not in aviation for something that sometimes we might even take for granted, flying to breakfast or lunch and seeing them light up, it's just like perspective, right? <laughs> How lucky we are. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sure. you are known in the aviation world for your social media, in particular on TikTok, and now you're even growing on YouTube and all these channels, which is amazing. Tell everyone what types of content can they expect to see on your social media channels? Oh gosh, that's a tough question. I gotta think about that for a minute. <laughs> Um, well, I think it depends on the channel that you watch. Um, my TikTok is mainly focused on introducing people to aviation um, and kind of simplifying it enough that anybody can enjoy it and become interested in it. I think one of the great things about TikTok is that it shows your content to people who don't follow you. So it's really easy to expose somebody to aviation that might not have that door open for them otherwise. YouTube, on the other hand, is where I'll post longer form videos, and it's really where I can tell a story and show the entire process of the trip. Um, I love leaving in all the little things like checklists. I just think it creates you know, so much more of a story, and I love to show the little details that I can't show in a one minute TikTok. Um, Instagram, the last platform, is where I really feel like I connect with my following, my audience, and um, that's just where I've met a lot of my close friends as well. So I love all three platforms. I think they're all super great for creating diverse content and I'm super excited to keep sharing it with you. Well, congrats on all of your success on social media and inspiring people to join aviation and teaching about it. Uh, you've done so much through all of that. And what do you think, how do you think this has affected the younger women that follow you? Like, what do you hope that they get out of it from watching you? So I think it's really full circle because I started flying because of an Instagram post that I saw when I was in high school. So I think it's really special and unique to be able to turn around and now inspire hundreds, you know, thousands of people possibly to learn to fly. Um, I think, you know, social media helps us overcome one of those big hurdles to getting young people, especially young women into aviation, which is just exposure. Nobody ever stood in my way and told me, you know, oh, don't go learn to fly. I was just never exposed to it. So. Um, I think that's definitely the main goal of like all my social media is just to expose as many people as possible to something that they might end up loving. So now that you've done all the hard work and you're putting out all of this content and all these people are ingesting your content, if they want to join aviation, what is your advice to them for a good first step? Best first step to take is exactly what I did, which is Google a flight school in your area and sign up for a discovery flight. I think, you know, there's a lot of things that people will say, you know, go get your medical first, which is super important. Um, make sure, you know, you have the financials to do it. But I think finding out if you like it to begin with is a great way to start and kind of sparking that love for aviation um, is definitely the first step that I would take. That is great advice. I know that I could talk to you about airplanes and everything forever. So I just want to thank you for being here with us for this short time today and helping to inspire the next generation. What you do is very important. So thank you from all of us.